Hello, so today I'm going to try and um, make an ointment here for you. I'm kind of locked in this room at the moment. Uh, my son's practicing his guitar and his uncle's over and yada yada, whatever. So I'm locked in this room at the moment and I wanted to get this project started. So I thought, okay, I'll just bring her on into the room and do my best in here. Okay, right, so I'll start the demonstration of what I'm trying to share here today with making an ointment. Okay, so I've got some fresh, fresh uh, products that I pulled just moments before this. You got um, some goldenrod, some yarrow, some wild lettuce, even a piece of uh, onion that was uh, grew its way back this summer, so it's second year onion. Ah. Uh, some poppy pods in the jar that I pulled fresh just moments. Some colt's foot. And then I got some dry ingredients like we got calendulia, rosemary, St. John's wort, some older roses, uh, some bee balm that's still in jars, plus some bee balm that I clipped uh, out of the forest this year and used a little bit of it in tincture already. So. This is what's sitting here left, and I thought, oh, I'm also throw her in here today. So, um, these are the products first, I guess, that I'm going to use today. You can use anything that you desire that can be infused in oil. Uh, choice of oil today is this bottle here. Um, just, I found it, it's olive oil, whatever. Sometimes I'll use grapeseed oil. Um, and other oils. I do not ever use canola oil. Never, never use canola oil for these, uh, for these, um, ointment infusions. Just, uh, you can use sunflower oil. I've never used sunflower oil, but, uh, people have. Alright, so I'm gonna push pause and come back. I'm at the stage now where I've cut all the fresh, the fresh ingredients, the the plants that I've chosen to put in here um, have been chopped up. Um, there are some leftovers, but I mean, you don't necessarily need all of what you bring to the table. Here's the bowl we've got for um, double boiler is what you need. I, I do big batches. You don't need a big bowl like this. You can do little amounts, but like I say, I do big batches. So I like to use the old casserole dish with a big size pot that you put water in. It's best off if you have an older pot because you're going to be um, topping off the water and doing the double boiler method for up to three hours is average. I um, have a different method. I, um, I do it for three to six hours, let it sit and stew after it's done, and then I add more ingredients and more oil and I do it again in the double boiler and sometimes I'll take up to a two week processing depending on how strong or what I'm making it for. Like bones and arthritis type of stuff, I can, I can pull off a batch a little faster but ones that I make for uh, serious pain um, in people like say cancer problems and such, they can take a little longer because I like to add more fresh ingredients, stew it down, stew it down. Um, and uh, you don't need any particular kind of olive oil. Just make sure you get some kind of olive oil um, or grapeseed oil. I really like working with grapeseed oil too. Um, there are other ones you can work with castor oil and all sorts of different oils of choice, I suppose. But okay. So I'm at the stage where I want to take some old roses out of this jar and I just want to mash them. Well, I'll do it when I'm on pause, I guess. Mashed it and uh, as long as it's got the, like the rose buds itself, these are fresh ones, this is old in here. So when they get old and are dried rather, um, you can't just squish them. These are so fresh that they're not quite red. They still have some green on them, but they're not quite ready yet this season. So I'll be uh, adding to it as the time comes on. Uh, 
rose gives you lots of vitamin C and it's good for your heart. It's good for all sorts of health benefits. <coughs> These little things have more vitamin C in them than a whole orange. I believe it's 436 milligrams of vitamin C in one of these little rosebuds. Okay, I could be wrong on math on that, but <clears throat> approximately. I cut one of the rosebuds open here and it has many, many seeds inside. These seeds of this rose when dropped in dirt in the natural, will either come back as a raspberry, a strawberry, a plum tree, um, a choke cherry bush, a black cherry, um, different species of cherry bush there, um, because it's all in the rose family. I, I'm gonna dump this in here with the dried roses. And so you can pretty much break them with your fingers. I just like to break them. It's less mashing later. Sometimes um, if I just get going on a ointment like this and I haven't mashed them, later I just get a potato mash and make sure that they're all good once the oil is uh, warmed and doing its thing on the double boiler here. And you don't want to... Um, overfill your water line just you can see the bottom of this is kind of white and stuff that's because it's been used so much um, and I let steam come out along the side here um, and you got to check it I, I check it every half hour every 40 minutes kind of thing and pull it off top it up um, top up the water because you don't want to run out of water, you will burn your oil around and then you'll have problems, but it'll still work. It's just a nightmare. Okay, um, next I'm going to throw in my poppy friends here, which are great for pain, we all know, but so are a lot of these other uh, plant friends in here, especially like the wild lettuce. Goldenrod's good. Uh, this is great for respiratory and arthritis issues. They're all pretty much going to help to cure the body of pains, aches, and such. Now, you don't have to follow this recipe. Just go out and uh, find what kind of stuff that you think you like. And But the important part is, is don't overput certain things. Like rosemary, for example. 